Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It is I, Commander Kirby, your international man of leisure. This time I am not coming to you from Japan. I am, in fact, in the beautiful country slash city state of Singapore. Now, Singapore is known for its beautiful beaches, downright fantastic food, and amazing accommodations. And no place, no place makes that more true than the place I'll be starting my adventure at here, which is the Marina Bay Sands, as you can see behind me. And no, your eyes are not deceiving you. That is, in fact, a boat on top of the three towers. That is the hotel I will be staying in to start everything off. Now, that boat is actually an infinity pool, a nightclub, and an attraction here that everybody goes to at least once, and that's the Skywatch Pavilion. It'll let you see all of Singapore. So. I'm going to show you why this particular hotel is a definite must-see when you come here to Singapore. Um, so let's go take a look. All right, I've checked into my room, or hotel. Now I'm heading to the room. We're going to take a look at it. So got my key. Going in the room. Wow. Look at that hotel bathtub. The thing is a uh, conversation piece, we'll say that. Hmm. Nice shower. I get the knobs are here, but it hits you from behind. <laughs> and I guess that is the toilet. Yes, it is a toilet and it has a phone in case I need to call someone while on the toilet. All right, double sink, that's nice. Of course, the complimentary things here. That is a nice tub. All right, coming back out into the main room, got my closet with, of course, the bathrobe, slippers, extra pillow. Huh. There is a flashlight here. That is pretty cool. Safe hair dryer and cleaning bags. All right. There is my luxurious king bed. This is a huge room. Now, I'm used to being in Japan where, well, the rooms are about the size of that front foyer area. So that is nice. And look at this. Oh, I've got a balcony with a view. Let's go take a look at this. So, all right. Look at that. It opens both sides. It swings open. Huh. Got my little balcony here. Oh man, look at that view. I've got a beautiful view of the gardens by the bay. The gardens by the bay is a nature park covering about 250 acres of land and is comprised of three gardens, two large conservatories, and one amazing skyway. The three gardens are Bay East, Bay Central, and Bay South, each drawn from a different inspiration for their design. Bay East Garden is designed as a series of large and tropical leaf-shaped gardens, each with their own unique landscaping, as well as five water inlets that not only extend the shoreline, but also to help cool the rest of the area. Bay Central is a link to the other gardens and has a long 1.9 mile waterfront promenade for scenic walks from the city center to the east of Singapore. Bay South is the largest of the three conservatories and is designed to represent an orchid. It is here where you will find the Super Tree Grove as well as the two conservatories Cloud Forest and the Flower Dome. Cloud Forest is the taller of the two conservatories and it's meant to replicate the cool moist conditions found in a mountainous tropical region. It has a 35 meter tall mist covered mountain like structure in the middle that is broken up into a number of levels. Now each of those levels is meant to re represent a different region that you would cross into on the mountain, a different biome as you will. So as you're climbing up the mountain, the plants are going to change uh, depending upon where you would actually be. The other conservatory is the Flower Dome. 
It is the largest greenhouse in the world and covers about three acres. Now, it is kept at a cool, dry Mediterranean-like climate, and it features eight gardens that exhibit exotic flowers and plants from the Mediterranean, as well as other semi-arid regions around the world. They even have a garden that uh, represents Australia, as well as Flower Field, which is a changing display in, centered on a specific theme. Now, the theme that was uh, going on while I was there was uh, Chinna Pass, or the uh, floating gardens of the Aztecs. And as for the super trees, that is the three large structures you see when I'm looking out the window there. And there's a walkway between them that gives you a nice panoramic view of the entire garden. All right, well, I have checked into the room. I am now, I think, I am going to head upstairs to the Skywatch bar and a restaurant up there and get something to eat because I'm a little hungry and I'll show you this view from up there so be back in a bit all right so one of the great things about the Marina Bay Sands hotel is this amazing infinity pool they have on top of that giant boat that spans all three towers I mean you get to swim in this beautiful pool looking at this amazing view but maybe you're not wanting to swim well they also have hot tubs on the other side periodically spaced so you can lounge there you can get a nice tan there are three restaurants up here lavo senpai and say la vie each offering a little different fare for you but i'm telling you this is great. This is, this right here is worth the price of admission, ladies and gentlemen. Now, unfortunately, the pool is only open to hotel patrons. So if you come here, you will not be able to come up and experience this view from the pool. But way on the other side in the other uh, tower, there is the Skywatch Park. And you can get there, it is, is a charge, but it will take you all the way up to the 56th floor and you'll be able to see this whole view from it. Beautiful view of Singapore. But again, like I said, if you're not up for that, if you're wanting to do something more relaxing like the hot tub, you can see a beautiful view from up here of the ocean, all the ship traffic and even a good view of the Marina Bay Garden, or Marina Bay, Gardens by the Bay, that's right. Down there, Gardens by the Bay, that huge, beautiful park. So now if y'all will excuse me, I'm gonna go get in the pool and relax a little bit. None of y'all need to see that. So uh, I'll catch you maybe at breakfast. All right, so one of the great things about being here at the Marina Bay Sands is I get access to the Sky Park. Now, non-guests can come here too. It's gonna to cost you, what, about $15, $20, but it, it's worth it because this view is the best. All of Singapore. As you can see, everywhere, and I do mean everywhere, in the Sky Park, goes all the way around so that you can see the other side the ocean side so this is the city side got the ocean side you even have a little higher deck we can go to 
Yeah, that is just an amazing view. There's more of the mall. There's a the soccer field. There's the Art and Science Museum. That's where they have a laser light show at night on this side. They also have one on the gardens of the bay side. So make sure you see both of them. So we're gonna walk around the uh, other side. You can also access the restaurant sale IV from up here. They've got a little snack and concession part. Because it does tend to get warm up here. I mean, look at this. cannot beat this view at all. Now, Singapore is really a foodie's dream. Now, as I said before, one of the things Singapore is really known for are their hawker stands. They are places where you can get delicious food, just a huge variety of it. I'm currently here in Chinatown. That's the Chinatown complex is what we're in here now. And it's one of the places that you can get quite a few um, amazing things to eat. Now, Singapore also was, again, the first place to have a Michelin star rated hawker stand. And I'm now right outside of it. Leo Fans Hawker Chain. It was the first hawker stand to get a Michelin star rating. Since then, uh, the uh, Michelin company uh, has start, created the Big Gourmands, which is uh, kind of like it's still it's as, as prestigious an honor as the Michelin rating. But it's, uh, it's more for your regular and casual dining, not as, so much as your fine dining. So I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna try their, or gonna see if I can get there. They're pretty busy right now, as you can see. But I'm gonna try and get their uh, soya chicken and rice. That's what they were known for. That was at the time also, it was the cheapest Michelin rated dish you can get. All right, so I've got my meal here. It has arrived. It is right there. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the world's cheapest Michelin star rated dish. I went with coconut for my drink. And the soya chicken and rice. Let me give it a try here. So let's get this set up. Ça 
not bad. It's got a nice subtle flavor to it. I'm gonna go with the sauce on the rice here because apparently you're supposed to mix these together. Almost like a teriyaki sauce. Not as sweet. Really good. And of course, they were popular coconut. Oh wow, that's really good. I've never had that before, ladies and gentlemen. That is my first time to have a fresh coconut cut open and drink out of it, so. Anyway, I'm gonna get back here to eat. So one of the foods that Singapore is most well known for is of course the chili crab. So I figure if I'm gonna get the chili crab here in Singapore, I might as well go to the place that invented it. So you see chili crab was originally invented in, in a hawker cart, hawker stand, uh, and they were so popular and they sold so much of it that they were eventually able to open up their own restaurant. And that restaurant is still open today. And that is the Palm Beach Seafood Restaurant which is where I'm gonna be having lunch today. So let's go ahead and hop in here, get our table, and we're gonna order some chili crab. So while waiting for my uh, chili crab to show up, I decided that since I'm in Singapore, I should probably try a local Singaporean drink. That's right, I have ordered myself a Singapore sling. Now. The Singapore Sling was invented sometime before uh, 1915 by, and I know I'm gonna butcher this name, by a bartender named Niang Tong Boon. So he was working at the Long Bar at Six Raffles, or Long Bar at Raffles Boulevard. And he wanted to make, uh, again, he wanted to make a Singaporean type thing. So uh, Singapore Sling is of course a gin-based drink with uh, a little bit of cherry, Brandy, um, pineapple juice, cherry juice, uh, what is it? I'm trying to pull this off the top of my head here. Um, orange, pineapple, and lime juices. So he created that. Uh, sling drink is just a name for a, a gin and juice, gin water and juice type drink. So he made this. Let me give it a little taste here. nice sweet you really can't taste the alcohol in it so yeah I can see how these are uh, a little dangerous you could uh, get a lot because it's two parts gin not just one so two parts gin one part cherry brandy mixed in with equal parts of orange lemon and lime juices so I'm gonna enjoy this drink while I wait for my food all right so the first crab has arrived the creamy crab. Now, just to give you an idea how big that thing is, there's my hand. Look at that. That is a monster. So we'll try the creamy crab first, and then the chili crab should be out soon. So I'm gonna turn the camera off and turn it over to my unknown cameraman so he can film me and the newest member of the international panel, Mr. Lewis Garrett. I'll let him introduce himself here in a second. Hi, I'm Lewis. I'm going to be eating the uh, chili crab and indulging on this awesome experience with Mr. Commander Kirby himself. So, so I'm going to do the chili crab first. Seriously, look at this claw. That's my finger. That's it cutting my finger off right there. That was funny. All right. The meat is huge. All right. Here we go. Mm. 
That is good. It does not have a sweet chili flavor like I was expecting. That's more of a, a meaty flavor with just a little bit of a little bit of spice to it. Mm. Definitely. I can now see why this is one of the most popular dishes here in Singapore. I'll flip you over here and let uh, Louis tell you about the creamy crab he's currently munching on. Perfect. So the creamy crab has these uh, kefir lime leaves. And that adds a faint citrus flavor to it. And the actual natural meat of the crab is extremely sweet, so... But, go ahead and try this. <laughs> Extremely good. And they use a curry, like a really slight curry flavor to it as well. If you ever come down to Singapore, definitely get yourself some. So we just finished our complete meal of chili crab, creamy crab, shark fin soup, and fried baby squid. Fried baby squid. All right. So uh, thoughts on the chili crab? Chili crab. The uh, sauce was really thick and very hearty. Um, it had a good contrast against the sweet meat, uh, the naturally sweet meat of the uh, actual uh, mud crab. So it was a good contrast. It yeah. balanced out really well. And it, I, I, I liked the fact that it had a nice slow burn to it. So it wasn't, it was, yeah. it wasn't hot, like you could, you could taste it. And then a little bit later, you'd start getting just a little bit of heat, but not like anything major, like yeah. our, our uh, unseen cameraman here mm -hmm. who hates spicy foods. <laughs> He even ate it and said that it was yeah. good. But it's a slow, it was like a warm, like a warm heat. It wasn't a sharp, like sharp heat. It was a warm heat. Yeah. It was really good, really well balanced. All right, next come up on the chili crab. Chili, or the uh, cream crab. Cream crab, creamy crab. Cream crab, outstanding. The sauce was extremely thick, but it was extremely heavy and thick, but it had a really light flavor and it paired extremely well. I think it was award-winning as well too. The yeah. cream crab, it was a restaurant's award-winning uh, cream crab. So highly recommend that. Yeah, so now I can really see after having after having both the chili and the cream crab, I can see why those are Singapore's most memorable dishes. Most definitely. Um, I really liked the the creaminess. The the it almost had like a uh, almost sweet Alfredo. It was sweet. It was very. It was like slightly sweet, and it was uh, citrusy as well. Yep. There was like kefir lime leaves in there. It was citrusy. It was good. Yes. Um, now the shark fin soup was very surprising. I, I'd never had it before. Weird texture. It, the, it was strange texture. Yeah, it was almost like a crunchy tripe. I mm -hmm. guess. I would guess. It. Yeah, stringy and crunchy, but also gelatinous too. Yeah, it was. It was just a it's weird its own texture, thing. but it had a really great flavor. I mean, I would definitely do some more of that, even if it yeah. didn't have the shark. Just the shark meat itself, not the fin. Definitely. Uh, and then. The crunchy baby squid. Crunchy baby squid, really different. Not really like calamari, um, but fried to a crisp, uh, and it was tossing like a teriyaki sweet sauce. It's yeah. pretty good. Different, yeah. I wouldn't say amazing, but definitely different. It was oh, good. Oh yeah, definitely. It, very good, I like it. And it was really crunchy. I mean, it, mm -hmm. normally when you think uh, fried squid, you're thinking calamari, you're thinking um, something like that, where it's, it's crunchy, yeah, yeah. but then it's, it's, it's the meat, yeah. chewy on the inside. This was crunch all the almost way through. Like chips, almost like chips. Yeah. But super good though. And then you had one thing that the rest of us did not. Fried durian. So coming to Singapore, I found out I do like durian quite a bit. So I've been <laughs> trying to order at every other restaurant we go to. Yeah. But uh, durian, the uh, flavor, it almost tastes pineapple-y, onion. It's, 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 uh, the best way I can describe it is like pineapples, onions, and it has very, <laughs> it's its own thing. You gotta experience it yourself in order to figure out what it tastes like. So how would you compare it fried with ice cream to the softy, uh, the way it's normally served, which is like a, almost like a pudding. Yeah. Fried with ice cream, the sweetness, the sweet and custardy, um, they both have the same exact consistency, believe it or not. But the um, the strong, pungent flavor of the durian really balanced out really good with the uh, vanilla ice cream it came with. So that was really good. Definitely so, a treat. Now, I, I'm sure Lewis would agree with me on this one. Singapore is a foodie's dream. Definitely 100% a foodie's dream. All we've been doing, like, we knocked out all the touristy stuff the first day. Everything else, the next two days, we've just been eating. <laughs> Definitely a foodie's dream. All right. Well, folks, thank you all for joining us here on the Singaporean adventure. Right now, it's time for us to go. Well, I guess you guys are going to a museum. 
I'm gonna go to a museum, yeah. Yeah, and I'm, oddly enough, I'm gonna go look to at a regular grocery store to try and find some uh, spices and everything to take back to uh, Iwakuni. So, until next time, y'all stay safe out there. This is Commander Kirby, the International Man of Leisure. And Louie. Signing off.